Now, all of them have been recorded, but we are not going to post all of the recordings until the boot camp is finished in its entirety, which will wrap up next Thursday, just because we wanted it to be like a boot camp. You have to come and then we'll just put it all out there at once. So who's ready? We're going to put everything that we've learned so far into place. And we're actually going to cover just kind of how we did last night with sales. We're going to do the same thing tonight with sponsoring. So we're going to talk about the grow method. We're picking back up with the W. So if you've missed some before, we're, we've implemented the grow model, which we'll get into that a little bit down the line, and you'll get to know what that looks like. So work to, work to establish next steps, objections. And I want you to think, you know, when I hear an objection or somebody say something that I'm not quite prepared for, don't look at that as an objection, look at it as an opportunity. So we're going to walk through some objections. We have a couple other sponsoring strategies because I know most of what we've been talking about so far is conversations, right? Because we're getting back out there. We're going back out again and man, does it feel good, right? So I really wanted you guys to get the feel for how those conversations should be, but we do have a couple other things that we can always implement. We have a guest speaker with us tonight. I'm not gonna tell you who just yet, but she has some amazing tips and strategies to share. She has been super successful over the past couple of months with adding people to her team. And then as always, we're gonna round things out with a call to action. All right, again, we went through how to handle these responses for sales objections, but now we're going to walk through how to handle when it comes to talking to people about joining your team. And it's pretty simple, right? You ask a question, you ask someone to be a part of your team and you're gonna get a response. So I want you guys to be prepared on how to handle these. So you could hear no, you could hear maybe, you could hear yes, which is what we want, right? And then next, you could hear some obstacles, but we're going to look at them as opportunities. And I found a great quote, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And try to, try to say that four times fast. I practice that over and over, all right? So with that said, if you hear a no, okay? You've done all the work, you've implemented the grow model, and you get to the part and man, you know what? They're just, it's, it's a no. But just like when you're talking to people about products, it's not a no for, it's a no for right now, but it's not a forever no. So keep that in mind and don't let that discourage you from having other conversations about joining your team. All right. So respect the no, if they say that nobody wants to feel uh, pressured or, you know, if you've ever, tell me in the, in the comments, if you've ever been in a boutique and a, maybe you have sort of a pushy salesperson, they keep bringing you clothes to try on and you're like, no, I don't, you know, I don't want that. That's not a good feeling. That's not who we are as a brand. We want to be our genuine, authentic selves. So respect the no, and you can kind of word things like this. Well, that's okay. Totally understand. I know how well connected you are. Do you know anyone who may be interested in this opportunity? All right. So you're doing a couple of things. You're respecting the no, but you're also asking for a referral, which is super important. Now, just because they're not going to be a team member doesn't mean we can't get them involved in other ways. So you could always talk to them about hosting a party. What about being a customer? Give them your brand book. They're so beautiful. They have all of our products. Just, I, I mentioned this last night, but make sure you have a sticker or something on the back of your brand book that says your name, the your online store web address, phone number, email, all of that information so they know how to get a hold of you. Speaking of getting a hold of, connect with them, get their contact information. That's key. Connect with them on social media. You never know. You could be in the middle of a live talking about going to Iceland or achieving a big bonus or getting a bunch of free product. That person who you talked to three weeks ago, who knows? A lot can happen in three weeks. Maybe their hours got cut or they're looking for a chance to get more involved in their community. So that could really speak to them and they could reach out and contact you. 
Uh, Charlotte, add info on the front and back of the brand book. Great tip. And then let's see, Lisa, you can make a QR code post on that also. Ooh, yes, I love that. See, I learned from you guys too. This is fantastic. QR code. All right, that's a great tip. Now, maybe, okay, maybe, baby, we've all heard it, all right? Now, here's what you, here's how you can handle the maybe. Dig a little deeper, and when it comes to yourself, we talk about digging deeper with them and asking questions, and of course, we always want to do that, but this is when you share your story. What has the body shop at home done for you? Maybe you've made some new friends, paid off some debt, student loans, what have you, maybe you've taken a trip, whatever that is, share that story. And think of the people, if you do have a team, does a team member have a similar story? Are they, are they similar to the person you're talking to? And maybe you could connect them so that person could share their story, all right? So talk about what the Body Shop at Home has done for you. And then next, talk about your why. I promise you it's a lot more powerful than you think. So what brought you here? And if you feel comfortable in the chat, I would love to know your why. I've heard from some of you here and there, and I always love learning more about you and what brought you to the body shop at home. So share your why with them. And then talk about what are you passionate about? Is it our, you know, our brand, our purpose, who we are as a company? Uh, Christy, my previous MLM was paying fair. Okay, I think that's on, a, we're on a different subject. Okay, but yeah, talk about your why, your what you're passionate about. That will really shine through. When you're excited about what you're talking about, people pick up on the energy and they want to be a part of that, all right? Now, help them see the benefits more clearly. Why not invite them to one of your team meetings? Or if you don't have a team, invite them to the home office. We do the turn your passion into profit. And you guys heard Bridget's announcement the other day. We are hitting the road. So why not invite that person to our road shows? You know, if that if they can make it, that would be great. We have the guest event in the, the second part of the day. So get them involved. Let them see what they're missing. And they're going to leave that meeting. And they're definitely going to want to be a part of the team. All right, here's the answer we all want. And that's a yes, okay? Tell me in the chat. Let me know if you've signed somebody up. And I know from personal experience, it is the best feeling. You just get so excited. You're excited for yourself. You're excited for them to get started. And because of that, because of the excitement, we want them, you want, you want to get started with them right then and there. So what do you need to get them started? Walk them through the process, okay? Go through it with them. Do not, do not wait for them to go home and sign up themselves. What will happen? They may get distracted, forget, you know, I mean, life just happens. We talked about this last night. So complete the process with them. They don't have any questions or technical difficulties and you, can breathe a sigh of relief because you know it's done and you're you've been with them. Colleen says super excited. I still get excited. Absolutely. I don't think you ever lose that feeling, which is great. Thanks for sharing that, Colleen. And then ask what do they need from you to help get them started? If you do have brand books, samples, any, you know, little freebie products that you have that you may have with you. Give that to that person because that way they can hit the ground running. If you give them four or five brand books, they can pass those out anywhere they go to people they see, their family, friends right away. Because again, there's that excitement when they start right away. Give out samples, products until their kit comes. Those are all great examples of how you can start them off on the right foot. Now, you want to make a positive first impression and onboarding. There's a lot that goes into onboarding and we could do a whole separate training on that. I could talk for hours and hours about onboarding and how to do it and all the different things, but we're going to keep it simple for tonight. So you really want to set them up for success and keeping in touch with them throughout the first, I would say four to six weeks, that's going to be key. So check in on them. 
simple text, a phone call, connect with them on social media. So you guys can kind of stay connected throughout the day. If they have any questions, you want to try to answer them as quickly as you can. Now, I understand you, you know, you have lives and families, so you can't always be on a call and you do need to set those healthy boundaries for yourself. But be in touch. Do they know about BEP? Would you be able to explain it? Do you know what, what is happening in the activation pack? Do you know when Welcome Wednesdays are held? These are all things that you want to get them connected to and inform them about. And lastly, invite them to our Inspirations Facebook group. You guys know because you're a part of it. We go live in there a lot. That's where we post things on what's going on with the body shop at home, incentives, competitions, all kinds of great stuff. And Christy says, yes, really good info. All right. Now it's time for our objections. We did this last night with sales objections and tonight we're gonna do sponsoring objections. So I think we have some pretty common ones. And again, let me know in the chat if you all have heard these, all right? First one, you can't make money in direct sales. Okay, we've all heard that one, right? Oh my gosh, I would not be a good salesperson. I'm just not good at it. Definitely heard that one. Oh my gosh, I'm so busy. I just wouldn't have enough time. Again, we've all heard these objections, but we're going to flip the script. We're going to reframe and we're going to look at these as opportunities. Christina says, I said all three, <laughs> right? Sarah says, yes, heard them all. Okay. Jill, not good at sales. I hear that all the time. All right. So because you hear that all the time, I want you guys to have a rebuttal ready to go. So we're going to look at these together. And before we go through them, as you're hearing these obstacles, what do you do? Do you A, agree with them? Yeah, you probably won't be very good at this. No, I'm just kidding. You, I, you would not want to do that. But do you agree with them? Do you kind of play it off? Do you tell them how you felt when you first joined? There we go. Tell them how amazing they'd be or ask open-ended questions to find out more about what they are experiencing and feeling. Okay, Lisa says B, C, D. Christina says B. Yeah, you could definitely do a combo, switch it up here. I like it. Christina says B and D. All right, I like that. There's, and I'm pretty sure you could do every single one of those, but A. <laughs> All right, talk to me guys. You can't make money in direct sales. We want to, oh wait, nope, let me go back, 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 back. You can't make money in direct sales. How do you think you should handle this? If you guys are hearing it all the time, what do you say? This is where we come together as a group and we learn from each other. I have a, I have a couple ideas. Mandy, I always say I'm not good at sales either, but I do like to share, love that. So if you think of it as sharing what you love, it's actually really easy. Oh my gosh, that is perfect. Christy, how much money do you need to make? Hmm, I like that. Charlotte says she shares what she makes. That's, that's completely up to you if you feel comfortable doing that. Absolutely. So a couple of things. Listen for what it, why it may take time. It's worth it. Plus, I've made some amazing friends along the way. We're truly a community. And I really love what Mandy says. That is fantastic. And you can talk about how we're more than just a direct selling company. You know, we use business as a force for good. We're a B Corp certified corporation or company. So all of those little things that make us who we are and stand out from other direct selling companies, tie those in too. Christina also mentions, I work with their goals. It's not about me. Christina, hit the nail on the head. We're actually going to talk about that later tonight. So you're one step ahead of me. I love that. All right. We're coming up with some really good rebuttals. See, we're opening the door. All right. We're not knocking down those objections. All right. This one. Oh, I got to pause. Christy, everyone is a seller. You sell people every day with your favorite foods, cars, and vacations. Okay. Yeah. So why not this opportunity? Thank you for sharing, Christy. I love that. Okay. Next one. I wouldn't be a good salesperson. How do you handle this one? I'm gonna give you guys a minute to think. I know it, it, it takes a minute or two to, to craft a response. And again, I have some, I have some ideas. 
wouldn't be a good salesperson. I'm too shy. Christina, we aren't salespeople. Again, that could that kind of works both ways. We aren't salespeople. We share what we love. Yes, we share what we're passionate about. Jessica, I don't view it as selling. I view it as sharing. Yeah, so I love what you guys are talking about this evening, about the, the sharing. Jill, have you ever tried? Oh, mic drop. You don't, never know until you try. Absolutely. Sarah, the products sell themselves. Yeah, they're super popular. Our body butters are flying off the shelves. Uh, Christy, the only real ability you need is the ability to learn. Do you have this capability? I love that. You guys are on fire tonight. Another couple of ideas. You can maybe share your story and say, I felt the same way, but luckily you'll have me here to support you along the way. We also have an amazing sales and training team to support you in your journey as well. And I mean, even be honest with them and you can say, you know, full transparency, I wasn't the best at first either, but my upline was a great coach. I'll be there for you. I'll share all my best secrets. Don't think of it as selling. Think of it as sharing. Again, it's all in how you reframe that. So thank you guys for giving me your tips. Jill mentions, I do tell them I am here to help. That is a great Jill because yeah, they're definitely going to need to lean on you, especially in the beginning for support. Again, think about how you felt when you first joined. It was a little overwhelming, right? So the great thing about having a team of your own is you get to be looked at as the leader, the coach, the cheerleader. So you get all of those roles. It's really kind of fun. All right, next objection. Let's open that door to opportunity. I don't have enough time. Christina, we train, we help, we are here to help you. Absolutely, always offer support that helps them feel heard and a little less intimidated, I think. So that's great, Christina. Thank you for sharing that. Again, put your response in the chat, what you say or what you think you should say. So busy, I don't have enough time. This is one that we've heard. Jill, well, I asked, do you, well, I ask if they have a few hours a week. Christy, do you have about 15 minutes four times a week? Okay, yeah, three to four, 15 minutes a few times a week. All right, yeah, so ask, you know, I know you're busy, but a lot of my team members are in the same boat, but this is totally on your own time. This is your own business. So it's up to you how you want to run it and when you want to run it. And that's the best part. Again, this is all on your own terms. You fit it into your life and not the other way around. Christina, do you have time to do one thing for your business every day? Could be as little as five minutes. Okay. All right. Love these responses. Thank you guys. Another tip from Christina. Oh, it popped up. Hold on, let me see if I can scroll down. Busy people can always fit more in. The people with lots of time, you need to be careful. Okay, it's true. The busiest people do make the best salespeople and the best leaders because they're well-connected. They know more people, so absolutely. Okay, we're gonna keep plugging along here, guys. Now, some other sponsoring strategies. We talked last week, and again, if you weren't on, that's fine. I can do a little bit of a recap. We talked last week in our sponsoring bootcamp about reaching out to your warm market. We talked a little bit about how to approach people in a total cold market, out and about when you're shopping, doing your errands. Those are our chance encounters. But we also talked about making our warm market list. So those of you who have been on for all four boot camps, let me know in the chat. Did you make your list? Have you reached out? Did you do your homework? So those of you who are on tonight, think about who you know. Make a list and then reach out. Who do you know who's outgoing? What friend of yours is outgoing? Super fun, life of the party. Who do you know who really loves a good cause? They're, you know, they stand up for what they believe in. They would lo love maybe to be an activist ambassador. So think about all those people that you know and think how you could connect this opportunity with them in some way. Lisa said yes to reach out and still working on it. Lisa B, you're amazing. Love that. And then again, we talked about chance encounters. So everywhere you go, 
And I know for those of you who this is a new concept, like, oh my gosh, I can't talk to people I don't know. I can approach somebody in the store or the hair salon. That's just really uncomfortable for me. Well, think about it this way. You'll probably never see that person again, okay? So go back and watch the replays. We talk about how to strike up a conversation using a compliment or common ground. And then that story or that, um, that intro can kind of snowball into a conversation about either a product or about joining your team. Next, opportunity events. These, you know, again, we're, we're getting back out there. So why not hold an in-person opportunity event, still virtual, if you wanna do that, great. Completely up to you and your comfort level, the comfort level of your guest. So have you had an opportunity meeting? Do you know how? If you don't know how and you want advice, reach out to me. I would be happy to train you and maybe even be there in person to support you. Lisa said, yes, I gave two possibly. Okay. Awesome. So two possible ready to sign and one that will do a party. That is fantastic. Do my little happy dance. Love that. Christina says vendor events are amazing. Yes. One step ahead of me. So yes, get involved in your community. This is a fantastic way to expand your network. So vendor shows, and there are some virtual vendor shows that I have seen people do and have a really great success rate with. They're also able to connect with other vendors, and then you can kind of see when they're doing events and you guys kind of stick together. It's a, it's a little fun to watch. Next, job fairs. I forget who, I think Colleen is doing a couple of job fairs who maybe mentioned that last night, um, or it was somebody that was doing a job fair. So look into those, research in your community, what vendor shows, job fairs, farmers markets are coming out. And Jill, events are a really great way to connect. Absolutely. While you're at the event, and I'm kind of going off topic, but while you're doing these events, make sure you get their contact information, just like any other conversation. Get their contact info, connect with them on social, because again, you never know what could change down the line. Christy, everywhere you go is an opportunity. Yes, my friend, absolutely. Get those chance encounters in. Now, speaking of Christy, I just said her name. So Christy Baruso, where are you, my friend? Can you come I'm off here. mute? There, hi. I'm here. All right, so I'm, I'm trying to see if I can make you bigger, but I don't know. You don't think I can. All right. Anyway, Christy, I would love it if you could share your story because you have been super successful over the past couple of months when it comes to recruiting. So if you could just share with everybody that's on tonight, sort of what you've been doing, how you've been doing it. I know everybody really likes example verbiage, you know, words to use. So I'm just going to stop talking and let you take it away. Well, okay, I hope to deliver some fabulous content and not to disappoint. So I always write notes to keep me on track. There you go. Um, well, and thank you, Allison, for having me speak on sparring. Um, so here we go, in really no particular order. This is uh, where and how I do what I do. So um, first, it's going to start with each one of you, you have to be willing to get yourself out there, okay? Um, you know that old saying, you have to get uncomfortable and then it gets comfortable. It's something like uncomfortableness. Well, what they don't tell you is once you break that barrier and you get comfortable being uncomfortable, that whole word jumble goes away and it just starts to be fun because you're getting used to the routine of always being um, ready, okay? So the second tip I have for you is the notebook. Have a notebook. I used to try to do this in my computer, but my computer is really clunky to carry around. So a notebook, I can't remember like what I already said three seconds ago. So I need this notebook. So when I meet the person in the grocery store, in the laundromat, at the wherever I am, I write it down or I write it on a pad that's in the car and I transfer it to the book. Things you should keep track in the book 
uh, is their full name, their phone number, their email, and a full address if you're mailing stuff. Because in this business, there's a chance you're going to mail a sample. Um, take notes with every person you encounter. Um, because after you've gone past two people, you don't remember. And sometimes it takes a month before your person's going to join because it's a relationship business. It just is. Um, so this is one of the ways, and I used it today. Um, and don't let that evil person, that other side, the yang, the yin, whatever it is that's the evil inside of you that always tries to tell you, no, not today, don't do it, it won't work out. Just instantly quash that. Because even happens to me. I made these lovely, no, I printed out these lovely prize draw slips and I put a sample on there. And on the back of the sample is my information, right? And then there's a scan me. I hope you guys can see that into my group on Facebook. I'm marching in a Peter Piper. I'm gonna get a pizza. I just made these. I got a bag in my purse. The little brain tells me, not today, don't today. And I'm like, wow, powerful, punch it out, right? Walk in and get the pizza. It's young people. I say after I get my pizza, would you like a sample? Yeah, sure. What is a sample of? I say it's our new CBD facial oil. Super good after you wash your face to apply. After you're done that, make sure you turn it over and scan the back into my customer group, right? That stupid little voice got smaller, but the girl that I hand this to, I handed three to because there was three people working. The girl I'm talking to gives it to the other two girls and the other girl that was making the pizza is the one that comes up when I get my pizza. She hands me the pizza and says, how do I get a hold of you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm dying inside because had I listened to that stupid voice, I wouldn't have given the sample out, right? So that's one. She's in my book. Her name's Fatima, and I met her at Peter Piper, and I'm there all the time. <laughs> so um, once they accept into your group, this is your invitation to send them a personal message. You welcome them in your group. You send them a private message. Always start at the top, you know? Thank you for coming into my group. Whatever you wanna say, but be entirely genuine. That's it. I think I jumped ahead of myself. So that first interaction, when I send them a private message, I just say, hi, my name's Christy. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited to be your body shop consultant, period. That's it, I don't say anything else. I don't send my link. Right? Because in reality, I just met you. And if you think about this in real terms, but I just met you, I'm not going to pounce on you. You know, I want to just get that conversation going. And that's what sets the body shop consultants apart. We do business for a force for good, right? Isn't that our saying? We do business for a force for good. So um, after you private message them, the conversation's going. When you send them a conversation and, you, and I say, I look forward to being your body shop consultant, leave it there like for 24 hours or more, right? Because that person on the other end, God knows what's going on in their world and they're probably not waiting for your private message. But if they haven't responded back in a couple of days, you might drop a note letting them know, hey, I just wanted to let you know we're having a fabulous sale with 20% off body yogurt. If you like the link, let me know. They have the link. They're in your group. You know what I mean? So you don't need to bombard them. So it's just these little seeds we're planting. I haven't overstepped anything. So um, what else did I write? This is a relationship business. I say be loud and proud. Always with another company for 20 years. And I was proud, but it wasn't quite loud. Oh, sometimes embarrassed. This company is different. We support everybody. Our emoji should be the earth because we encompass everybody. 
Okay, so be loud and proud. People love that. You don't have to be as loud as I am. Um, do you have a 30 second commercial? I'm a body shop consultant. Would you like a sample? That's all I got so far on my commercial. So far it's working pretty good. Since I've got no more, I can't say anything till they answer. Hi, I'm a body shop consultant. Would you like a sample? Yes, so far is the only answer I've heard. If they say no, I say that's perfectly fine. Have you ever used the body shop products? So, um, that's the next thing, listening. Listening, listening, listening. I'm going to be 49 years old next month. And I think it's taken me 40 years maybe even all 48. I think it's just recent. I've gotten the listening down. Um, but listening, taking that golden opportunity to listen, or in our case, sometimes it's just wait after you send that message. But listening, people will actually tell you everything you need to know. Just like in those questions, you know, when you said, um, they say, I don't have enough time. Great, that person just told you you're a bit, they're busy. Do you know what we want? We want the busy person because the busy person will always make more time. The person who's got lots of time ain't gonna make time, but the busy person will make time. So what you need to say is, I understand you're busy. It is like the new norm. If there was one day of the week that's calmer than others, which is it? Wednesday, cool. Wednesday is like my busiest day. You know what I mean? So my dead end for you, but you're starting to peel back the layers. Okay, let's see. Um, if people message me on social media, like if they reach out to me, I try to say the same thing and be consistent because the easier your message is, the easier it comes out of your mouth. So once something fluently comes out of your mouth, don't change it. <laughs> Go with it. Stay with it. Um, Let's see. One of my most important things is, I think it's taken me 48 years to learn this too, be careful not to pounce on people when they say yes, or even when they give you a warm lead. Pouncing on them is like word vomiting over them and they have no idea what just happened. They're like, I'm thinking about joining. And you're like, Bleh. they're like, oh my God. I um, yeah, I'll get back to you. And this Christy, because I literally used that term. I literally used that term last week when we were talking about sponsoring. Like, ask what <laughs> listen, don't word vomit on them. Yeah. <laughs> because if you can picture like, I love SpongeBob, I'm such a dark, but if you can picture like sis, sis um, the astronaut Sally, I don't know, but she always has rainbows coming out of her mouth. Can you just imagine like, you know, they're like, or they're like, you know, when somebody says they're in their want, when somebody actually comes to me, the first thing out of my mouth, my mouth is tell me more, tell me more why you want to be a body shop consultant. Do you know those words? If you try that tonight yourself, can you say those words? Tell me more. Why would you like to become a body shop consultant? That took me a while to master. But if somebody's coming to you, why are they coming to you? Interview them. So you said you wanted some terminology to give um, to people. So I don't exactly know what I would say. I mean, my 30 second commercial is, I'm a body shop consultant, would you like a sample? It's just Sometimes we overcomplicate. You know what works about it? The body shop. It's so intriguing. What is the body shop? Is that cars? Is that the body shop, body shop? I don't know what the body shop is. You get one of those three answers. So that could be your 30 second commercial. And from that, your words, I'm just going to tell you, it comes from your own heart. It comes from your own heart. And if it's not coming from your own heart, it should just come from simple kindness and the way you want to be treated. So if you sent a message and they didn't respond within five seconds, don't send another one because you don't want another one coming in. If somebody says they're busy, validate it and move on. But before you move on, make that appointment when you connect next. So 
I don't know if I rambled or if it made sense. No, Christy, this the is way is we are in the best business and the best thing you can be is yourself. People buy from people. In this week alone, I've had three people call me up and say, one person out the gate, right? She says to me, do you know they sell the body shop on Amazon? And I was like, smiley face, crack up. Seriously, they sell everything on Amazon was my response. <laughs> well, Christy, you have provided so much great insight. Again, if you're you're on, you're with us tonight, let us know in the chat, what was your main takeaway from Christy? So I want to just recap a couple of things that you said that really stood out for me. And we've been talking about this the entire boot camp, and you just you reiterated what I've been saying. So I love it. The first thing you said was get out there. You've got to get out there. You've got to put yourself out there. You've got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And then it becomes fun. I said that the very first day I was talking about this, like the more you do it, I know it sounds weird, but I promise you guys, it does get fun. Promise you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you then become like a master all of a sudden. And we're so brand new. You want to be a master because when all these hundreds, thousands come under, they're going to look for people that are loud and proud. Definitely. Definitely. And then one thing you mentioned, you're actually one step ahead of me next week. When we talk about follow-up, we're actually going to talk about how to keep track of your leads. So you mentioned that get all of their information and write notes on where you met them, what they look like. Again, I'm giving stuff away for next week. So I'll reel that back in. Um, but next thing you said, Christy squash that negative voice. All right. And we're going to actually mention that towards the end of this presentation, but yes, watch that voice. Okay. And then samples, easy way to start a conversation. That's her pitch. Nobody's going to say, I mean, well, not nobody, but most people will say, yes. I mean, somebody offers me one, I'm going to take it. I want to try it out. Absolutely. Next thing, not pounce on people, not give them too much information all at once. It's not on brand for who we are. We want to be our most authentic, genuine selves. Um, listen to what they're telling us. And then one thing she said about the busy people, I know we already talked about that, but I want everybody to hear it again because I thought it was so good. If they say they're really busy, she said, okay, well, what day of the week is the slowest for you? That's fantastic. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And then again, wrapping it up, what she said, comes from your heart. And Christy, we can just tell how, when you talk about everything, we can tell how passionate you are about your business and about the brand and about not just growing your team to grow your team, but you want to help other people. So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, Christy. You were absolutely amazing. But Aww. we're going to keep on plugging here. And a little pro tip to add to what we talked about tonight and to add to what Christy said if anyone does say yes, they want to join, okay, right then and there, keep that excitement going. All right, Christy, so excited to have you on my team. Who do you know that would want to join your team? Who would you want to be business partners with? What about your best friend, your sister? And that way, reach out on the spot because that, again, keeps that excitement and energy up and going. And you have, they have a team member on their very first day. Reiterate the fact that you can all learn and grow together. You're all there to support each other. We have a home office team, of course. And then think about the long-term ripple effect that that would have on not just your business, but on your new team member's business. You're, you know, this person, you recruit them, they recruit it. It's just one big long train. Okay. So a little pro tip to start incorporating when you do get that. Yes. All right. And then this goes back to what Christy was saying about making it about the other person. So I'm going to share one of my favorite poems and I'll try to keep it composed, but this is a poem and it's called maybe they need me. And actually before I read it, I'm going to pause Charlotte. Partner up with your BFF and earn money to travel together. I love that. Super fun. I bet that really grabs people, people's attention and engages them. Absolutely. That's brilliant, Charlotte. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Let's take a look. 
And I think some of you may have already heard this poem, but it had been a long day and I was finishing a task. As I hurried past them, that little voice said, ask. Ugh, not today, I told myself. I'm tired and it shows. Besides, I'd look foolish and they'd likely just say no. While drifting off to sleep that night, I saw their face again. I wondered what their life was like, their dreams, their needs, their pain. What if they'd been praying for a friendly word or smile, the chance to meet somebody that would go the extra mile? What if they'd been looking for a break, an open door? Was this the opportunity that they'd been wishing for? I saw the cars they would not drive, the rings they would not wear, because I would not risk myself to stop, to ask, to share. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna keep reading. So what if what I offered was not their cup of tea? That choice was for them to make. How selfish could I be? When all my dreams are realized, I don't want to feel regret for the lives I didn't touch and change, the no's I did not get. Let me live the true go give and let my mission be not do I need them, but maybe they need me. So when we make it about somebody else, and I have goosebumps, by the way, that just gets me every time because it's so true. When we step back and look at this as a true, not just, oh, we want to recruit. Oh, I want to get this trip. I want to make extra income. Of course, right? We can definitely admit that, but think about somebody else and what this could do for them. And when we look at it as a, we reframe it, right? It's a, it's a gift. It's an opportunity to share with somebody. And when we look at that with that mindset, it totally changes the game. So I wanted to end on that note. Um, oh, call to action. So we're going to continue to reach out to your warm market. We talked about that last week, we reiterated that tonight, aim for your two chance encounters a day. So everywhere you go, bank, grocery store, hair salon, dry cleaner, talk to people about your business. Aim for five virtual encounters a day. Again, if you miss boot camp, you're not quite sure what we're talking about, we'll go back and watch, watch the replay. Practice these objections that we went through this evening. And then lastly, do a quick Google search right after this call. So it's, it's right there in front of you. Just do it. You're probably already at your computer or on your phone, but look up events happening in your area. And tomorrow, reach out the contact person and try to schedule those events. Okay, coaching questions. We asked earlier, what was your biggest takeaway from Christy's tips and tricks, which I absolutely love, but did you have another light bulb moment or did something in your head go, ah, aha, that's what I need to try or anything like that, let me know in the chat. If you're in leadership, how are you going to encourage your team to take everything that we talked about this evening and incorporate it into their business? Next. How can adding to your team help you get to Nashville or Iceland? We talked about that last night. We kind of broke it down into baby steps, which was really great. So again, we don't want to miss those trips. I want us to all be there together. It's going to be so much fun. So I believe that is it. I'm going to close this out with a quote and that's make a habit of trying new things. Again, like Chrissy said, get out there. I'm going to come off of sharing my screen and come back to you. Oh, it's so nice to see everybody's face. Okay. Well, that concludes our sponsoring boot camp number two. Our last boot camp will be next Thursday, the 22nd. We're going to wrap everything up. We'll be talking about follow up with sponsoring and selling. So we're kind of doing a combination of both next week. So follow up, we're going to talk about confidence and how to feel confident when talking to others about our business. We're gonna talk about the power of our thoughts and mindset. And we're also gonna talk a little bit more about some other strategies you can put into place to not only grow your team, but grow your sales. Charlotte, go for the nose, absolutely. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being on tonight. It was lovely to be with you all. I had so much fun. Thank you, Christy, for being our guest speaker. And you guys have an amazing evening. Take care, guys. Bye, Sonia. Bye, Julie. Bye, Tracy. Bye, Deborah. Bye, Karen. You guys have a good night.